Pastor Omar Jawa from Dallas, Texas. I'm honored to be here for my brother and my brothers and all of you who are part of this celebration. I met Tim in this work of ours, working with the gangs. He was unusual. And the brother Bob Woods reminded me of this today. It was some brothers who were trying to challenge Tim to a fight. And Tim said, now we can fight, but before we do this, I want to just tell you that I was the boxing champ in prison. I just want to let you know, <laughs> but we still can fight now. I just want to be honest before we get into that. And the brother started negotiating with Tim. <laughs> and Tim said something that Bob says all the time. He said, I'm glad that both of us are hard enough to be soft. <laughs> that at some point you got to grow beyond your stuff, man. Hope keeps you going when you don't have product. See, it's nothing like being hopeful that you can make it, man. That somebody's with me. I'm not in this by myself. That gives you the ability to go places that you never thought you could go. I was the first uh, person hired as a gang specialist for the state of Texas. I was uh, working in the prison. It was at the height of the gang conflict. My job was to figure out resocialization solutions to get them to agree to peace. I would then furlough those young men and take them home. And I would go and ask the gang affiliates to allow them safe passage back into their neighborhoods. I did this deal called the Yamoja Council, and where the leaders and other sets and the cliques would mediate the conflict. So I taught them how to mediate and use their skills uh, rather than their hands. This is what I tell them. Most of you will survive this. So what you gonna do? If I'm recruiting guys in some of the roughest zip codes, and I'm asking them to become frontline soldiers to believe in this idea. Urban life does not have to be limited by violence and a subculture of abuse. That's all y'all do it, man, come on. The goal of Vision was to do exactly what you saw those guys doing, get these guys and put them inside of neighborhoods and schools and let them be the ambassadors of peace. I call them urban specialists, not just because they are able to do violence reduction, but they know how to look at this urban landscape and find what we can't see in it. They are by far the most effective people to invade and change this culture. Anton, he started the Bloods in Dallas. We made a vow that we'll be the ruthless, uh, most feared gang in the city. Terrence, he's been shot three times for point blank range, but they call him Maniac. All of us are prominent in the neighborhoods we come up out of. You got Bobby, the guy who organized those guys who became the most dangerous and feared clique in our city. We thought that was the way of life. We didn't have anyone to teach us better. If you really want to become successful at moving people from poverty to, to citizenship. Wouldn't you want to have some folk who have figured out how to become successful? Do you just want perpetual clients or do you want successful people? You know, and for me, it's no question. Without their success, you know, a lot of children die. A lot of dreams die. In Pleasant Grove, there are more deaths in that zip code than in Iraq during the war. A lot of kids coming up in single parent homes, especially the young men, they don't have that authority figure. Got hold of weapons at a young age, we in the hood. It's just a free fall that has said individual survival. Most of these children suppress their gifts because they have to play a role to, to fit in this culture. Yeah. They turn to the streets, they turn to the drug dealer for a role model. So in the process of living up to this, you gotta go to prison. 
or you gotta get killed. You gonna either be down with us or we gonna beat you up. And so that kid has to transform and be somebody else just to survive. Well, the pressure for a child who wakes up and says, this is my reality. They got one foot in and one foot out and they about to go the wrong way. It really is difficult for you to become a positive, vibrant, resilient person. Because this environment snatches it from them so quick. So someone comes and says, hey, man, you need to smile. They say, for what? There's a life aisles down to a grind, man. And it's a hell of a grind to live in that neighborhood, live in that institution, live in that environment without anybody giving you hope. That is very hurtful. That's why you got to have people who remind those in this trap that it's not permanent and that you have the ability to get out. This is where everything happened at. This phrase quit. This is how I consider these devils. No. <laughs> yeah, no. You see pivotal stuff. You know, you see point you see places where you be like, I remember this happened there. This is the car wash where I caught my first drug case. The drug dealers used to let us wash their cars, and then we graduated to standing out at the end of this street and being the watch out for the police. And then we actually graduated to being the sellers. I was uh, born in Frazier Court Projects, East, uh, better known as East Dallas, to a single mother. My father was sentenced to 50 years in prison when I was nine months. I got a whooping with a stitching cord one time. It was bad. I mean, it was so bad that I couldn't go to school the next day. It was so bad that my cousin had to come in and kind of remind me that my mother loved me. I'm a kid growing up with all these issues. No role models, no people to look up to. I got busy. I really applied myself in my earlier years. I became a straight A student. The school wanted to move me up a couple of grades because I was so smart. My mother doing the best she could with what she had on food stamps. My grandparents were pretty much my primary caretakers and still the lady, but it didn't matter. And as much as I wanted to apply myself to be focused and to be worried about school, I had to become a certain person. Our neighborhood had five different neighborhoods that surround our neighborhood. And all those neighborhoods had them identified with the crib. We would fight these guys for just no reason. And so one day, uh, I got pissed off, you know, and I said, you know what? We're gonna be bloods. It was a crazy decision to make, you know, because everybody was wearing blue. And I want the baddest, I want the toughest, I want the meanest, I was just more calculated. I was a dude that can say, let's do this, 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 and it's going to equal this. We were actually doing these things like we didn't think that we were going to get killed. It never crossed our mind. It never crossed our mind. I mean, we woke, we literally woke up every day looking to go put in work. We were hustling. We would probably make $80,000, $90,000 a day. I bought a, my first car at 13. We was addicted to that. I was losing a lot of friends to this idea that we started, that we created. It started to take its toll on me, and it really started to uh, started to wear on me. 
that I end up going to prison. So I'll never forget the judge said, you a menace to society when he sentenced me. I remember saying, huh? I had to look back and see what somebody else in the court, but he was talking to me. And I knew then that that wasn't me. Transformation is acknowledging that the life that I chose was wrong, even if it fit my survival mode. It was there in prison that I kind of, I gave up gangbang. I have been harmful to those who I thought were my enemies. Then I'm getting the understanding of God, so I'm like, I'm gonna be held accountable for this. I gotta do something about it. A redeemed life is not redeemed so that they can become for themselves successful. Redemption is being able to look at yourself, do some self-introspection, and say, where I go wrong at? What led to that choice that made me go wrong? And then you got to spend the rest of your life correcting it. It's so that they can become an example. Our relationship is better now because we were able to talk about that. You're the first one to call me and tell me she loved me. You know, I love my mother. These guys have demonstrated certain principles of peace that are necessary before you start going into this type of business. Oh, we come from where you come from. You think you had a heart? We had a heart, too. We probably had a harder than y'all had, but it's a way out. You got to find individuals that can lead you through this rough terrain. You cannot do a drive-by analysis of this kind of complex disease. It is guerrilla warfare. It is one-on-one. -on -one. We going in their neighborhoods, meeting them where they at. We know, bringing them to where they need to be. And your methodology has to be closer than the normal social architect. Well, I know that child, not my son. Yeah. Son, how you doing? Talk to me. What's wrong? Yeah. So you have a, a social service person who says, I'm going to call you, Johnny, when you get home. And then we're going to make sure you get to school. Well, these guys say, no, I'm going to go home with you. When this guy, he trying to put that dope in that young man or that young girl's hand, and we like, hey, man, we ain't got to tell him too many times. These guys are not with me because I can pay them more than the drug addicts. What would make them say, I'll yield my power to your cause? It's trust. If I knew stuff I knew now back then, I'd want a whole different direction. Man. And trust is something that only comes when both individuals are vulnerable to the issue. Well, I want to that boy from the hood, everybody like, yeah, he used to do this, he used to smoke, he used to do right. this cool. Now look right here, he got right. his own company, he got right. his own business, take care of his family. I got to convince them that there's more redeeming value in giving something to somebody who absolutely can give nothing to you. And I told them, if you give me a shot, I can at least introduce you to the public with a new identity. Right now, you are feared, and right now, you are loathed. Right now, you are dismissed, and I believe you got a chance to become a hero. Mike, check, one, two, one, two. You know what you're doing, Bruce? Yes, mother. that don't understand be the ones that go against it. <laughs> we breathe in life in your system. Go against the shooty contender just Sunday dinner. We created We Make Real Music. Our tenants was love and loyalty. It's a lot of hopeless people in poverty ridden neighborhoods. And we connected first on a need to re-love each other. Never give up. We feed and fellowship with the homeless. We do some stuff with Deion Sanders. He have a camp of all the elite athletes, we team up and we go talk to those kids. Proof of behavior is of what you do, not of what you say. Your mouth can say anything, but your behavior don't lie. So it's countless numbers of people that he's affected and infected with change. And that's a powerful thing. The music is the last thing. That's the fun part. If you wish I see the hunger, really saw you get pressed. We believe that we is in no shape, form, or fashion disillusioned that the hip-hop culture and what it produces and the message that it sends is non-conducive to our kids. They play music that's molesting our kids' minds. It only talk about the glamorization, the degradation of women. You cannot be surprised when we have the highest teen pregnancy rate, when most of our kids are going to prison. 
And so for We Make Real Music, it's more so about providing an alternative message to the common culture that tells kids the consequences of actions, the pain of actions. This culture needs that. It needs a voice that can identify with the people to say, look, we got this wrong. That's what we're doing every day, trying to make it happen. This group right here, if we'd have had that, we might not have been going to prison, out in the streets getting shot, selling drugs. They are the soldiers. So if you're going to fight a war, you better recruit some soldiers. It's our community. We live here. So it's either we going to build or destroy. It's a major movement. It's something different. It's something that you rarely see. The hood heroes are the heroes. Some, some folks you'll never know. They were impacted by his life, by his words. You got to start believing you beautiful. He saw the person I could be. Come on, you got to give me one more before I go. Uh, there you go. It makes me think about, am I going to get to finish? When people start looking at these guys, us, as part of the solution, not the problem, then we're going to make some headway. That's really what I'm thinking about. I don't get to finish.